Rose's Opinions is actually run in partnership between a mutated Atlantic cod and a transdimensional extraterrestrial, according to multiple staffers who are familiar with the channel and who were speaking on condition of anonymity due to non-disclosure agreements. The voice you hear on this channel is actually that of a former voice actor named Delaware Stevens, which has been processed electronically to disguise its origins. Whether or not this channel is intended as a part of a secretive intergalactic propaganda operation remains to be seen, but according to those staffers, it is quite possible. <laughs> now does this sound as ridiculous to you as it does to me? Probably so. But the real question is, does it sound that ridiculous because it's obviously false, or because this ridiculous report is given a touch of legitimacy by those anonymous sources? Well, I have some opinions on the subject, and my watch says that it's time for some roasted opinions. During this video, I will be showing a series of screenshots. Each of these screenshots is another article published online which cites at least one anonymous source, usually in the lead of the article. While I cycle through all of those articles, let's talk about anonymous sources in journalism. A few weeks back, I published a video about yellow journalism. If you click on the link in the upper right hand corner, you can go watch that video and get a more thorough rundown on the subject. So I will avoid a full rehash at this time. In 15 seconds or less, yellow journalism is what we now call fake news. It's not something like it. Fake news is the same thing. There are a lot of tools which we can use to evaluate news and news media publishers in order to determine if they are biased, and if so, in what way their bias leans and how far. One such tool is a website called Media Bias Fact Check. The site is run by Dr. Dave Van Zandt, the president of the New School in New York City. I use this website quite a bit, and for good reason. Dr. Van Zandt and his team do a very good job of evaluating news sources for bias using scientific methodology. They don't just evaluate the sources for sociopolitical bias, either. The website also evaluates and tracks pro-science bias, conspiracy theory, and pseudoscience bias, and tracks sources which routinely cite questionable sources as factually accurate separately from sociopolitical and intellectual versus zealotry biases. Is a very, very useful website. Media Bias Fact Check is not the only tool which I use, though. I also use plagiarism checkers like Turnitin and Grammarly. Apart from their original intent, they can be used to trace a story back to its origin, and sometimes that origin is interesting indeed. Take, for instance, the story which I spoke about last week regarding the Ukrainian official. That story originated from the Daily Beast, a website with a well-known bias towards the left politically. The fact that the report was published by the Daily Beast using information released to them directly suggests intent by Garishchenko, the Ukrainian official, to cause a specific effect. That in turn suggests that there was a propaganda agenda involved, and that means a lot more investigation into this report is needed. Politicians routinely involve themselves in foreign affairs, but they don't do so out of a sense of altruism as a general rule, after all. Everything in international politics is based on quid pro quo. The first question to ask when looking at any statement or act in this arena is the same one which criminal investigators ask. Qui bono? Who benefits? But I digress. The purpose of source anonymity is to protect the source from harm in order to foster accurate reporting. It's a basic tenet of journalistic ethics that journalists must act to limit the harm caused by their reporting to the best of their abilities. Now, I know that doesn't seem to square up with accurate reporting, but please note that the operative word is minimize not eliminate. Reporting the facts often causes harm to individuals and organizations, and nothing can eliminate that harm entirely. Backlash is a part of the harm which is sometimes caused by reporting. Sources often report information on people and organizations which those people and organizations would rather never see the light of day. The natural response to such reporting by those people and organizations is to strike back against the sources such reprisals can be devastating to the source of information in certain circumstances. That's why we have whistleblower laws, restricted reporting to the various offices of the Inspector General in government organizations, and other similar provisions in our laws. It's also why journalists have the duty to conceal the identity of their sources. 
The problem comes in when, as you can see from the volume of screenshots on display, these protections are overused. The same provision of the Code of Ethics states that journalists have a duty to disclose their sources as often and as specifically as possible so that the public can evaluate them and determine the validity of the information reported. This prevents journalists from following a common practice in the heady days of yellow journalism, creating imaginary sources for their reports in order to create the illusion of factual reporting from mere rumors. It also limits the number of times that an editorial board has to print a retraction, something which has become far, far too common in my humble opinion. What you see now is no longer articles which cite anonymous sources. Instead, I'm showing you retractions issued by major media outlets since 2015. But why would I start with 2015? Because that's when a certain businessman decided to run for public office for the first time in his life. A businessman who actually won despite derision and opposition from the media, and whose election has started to flip over the money changers' tables in the temples of the press. I'm pretty sure that you know his name. It's in the lead of story after story, most of which blame him for the state of the world today, and many of which use anonymous sources who know the situation, some of which have retractions which are on display here, in point of fact, but whether the half-baked stories in question were about that elected official or not, there's another fact which is almost universally true about the stories and their retractions. The stories went out on blast, but the retractions? Um, no. Just, no. They were issued quietly after the stories were pulled, and often only after the public demanded a retraction and an apology. Shouting lies and whispering the truth has become the modus operandi in journalism these days with far too many outlets. And for the same reasons which motivated Hearst and Pulitzer to publish their articles in the heyday of yellow journalism. Money! There is hope, though. It's not all gloom and doom. There are reporters and editors with personal and professional integrity. For the many who lack this integrity, the consequences are starting to catch up to them. Character assassination has begun to be a fireable offense again. So is manufacturing sources and deliberately reporting false information. What's more, the mistaken assumptions about the protections granted by the First Amendment are being tested again in civil court. Libel, slander, and defamation of character are beginning to be contemplated more often as grounds for lawsuits. And more lawsuits are being filed against reporters and their organizations which engage in this sort of reporting. But we need to do more, folks, and this is something which I want you to contemplate seriously. This kind of reporting and the organizations which allow it are far too common. Some of these organizations rank among the most respected news organizations in the world historically. It is not just a travesty that their journalistic and editorial standards have slipped so far. It's also a tragedy. They need our help to get back to the basics of ethical reporting. So we need to call them out on their fake news reporting in ways to which they might be open. If you're familiar with my videos, then about this time you might be wondering what I mean by this. Let's imagine for a moment that you are about to go into a building. The building appears to be perfectly sound, but there are two people outside. Are you more likely to listen to the one who calls you over and tells you calmly but firmly that the building has been evacuated for a suspected gas leak? Or the one who screams abuse at you and accuses you of creating the gas leak and trying to blow up the building? Or think of it another way. Are you more likely to respond positively to a friendly puppy or a bristling, growling dog? I don't know how you react, but I will pet a friendly puppy before a growling dog. I'm more likely to dismiss abusive screams as the ravings of a lunatic than a calm but firm message from someone who looks and sounds rational. I would guess that many people are like that. A calm and friendly message is more likely to produce a positive response and angry invective is more likely to provoke a negative reaction. This is important. A free press is critical to maintaining an informed electorate, and an informed electorate is critical to the functional government in a democratic republic like ours. We need to reach out calmly and firmly to these reporters, editors, and organizations and tell them that we see what they are doing and that they need to do better in order to defend that free press from their worst enemy themselves. To the press, I say this. You are overusing anonymous sources in your reporting. It makes everything which you report suspicious, especially when coupled with statements which are later proven false. For that matter, when your stories are disproven, 
you need to openly and honestly publish your corrections and retractions, at least as loudly as you proclaimed the original story. Yeah, it'll hurt every time that you have to eat crow in public, but it will also rebuild the trust between your organization and your audience. That rebuilt trust will carry you through transitions from one medium to another more effectively than debasing your reputation in order to compete directly with new organizations less interested in accuracy and more interested in message and advertising clicks. We don't care about your message. We want honesty instead. We want integrity. See to your own internal housekeeping. 